brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery.
A reading from the Book of Kings. The Lord said to Isaiah, You shall anoint Elijah, son of the shepherd of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elijah, son of Shaphat, as he was plying the twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelve. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elijah left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elijah left him. And taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elijah left and followed Isaiah as his attendant. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm. Do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you are called for freedom, brothers and sisters. But do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if you go on fighting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord.
for you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. <coughs> to him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then we be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, how are you today? We are blessed indeed. <clears throat> and you can agree with me that all the readings today, as always, are very engaging. They are. And so we shall take as our theme, listening to the voice of the Lord and doing what He tells us and following His lead. In other words, taking them from the scripture, we say, you know, the words of the gospel I can mention today, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the word of everlasting life. In that word from the scripture, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the word of everlasting life came from two different parts of the scripture. One came from the Old Testament. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 9. You know, when you remember the story, when God called Samuel, but he didn't know who was calling him. And the old man, Eli, told him to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then, the other side, you have the words of everlasting life came from the New Testament, and that is John chapter 6, verses 68. And you know the context was when Jesus said that his flesh is true food and his blood is true drink. And people said, this is too much. This is over the top. We cannot take it. They left because they said that they are not cannibals. How can he give us his flesh to eat? So, but they didn't realize he was as serious as heart at all. He was dead serious. So they left, and Jesus turned and said to Peter, and the rest stood by, wouldn't you also leave? That was when Peter said the word we have today. You have the word of everlasting life. Lord, to whom shall we go? We have come to know and believe that you are the Messiah. So, how does all this tie in with the gospel today? The core message is that God calls of all of us, each one of us, and sends us to a particular work He wants us to do, that everyone is called. And then the question is, how do we answer that call? In our vision of things, do we look at Jesus as one of the many uh, leaders of religion? In, in this most part of religion, of religious leaders, we say, well, Jesus is one, Muhammad is one, so you can choose either or. Do we, is that how we look at it? No. Jesus is the one. It is either him or nothing. It's God or nothing. So uh, let's look at the, the gospel, uh, the, the readings today, and see how people who were called and said what they did and how they responded. And then we can draw examples from their own you know, ways. In the first reading, 1 Kings chapter 19. 
the Lord had commissioned um, Elijah to anoint another person, Elisha, to succeed him. So there are two names there, Elijah and Elisha. Elijah meaning Yahweh is my God. And Elisha meaning the Lord is my salvation, Yahweh is my salvation. But prior to that, prior to uh, what the passage we read today, there were two other things the Lord told Elijah to do. Told him to anoint um, um, somebody whose name is called um, Hazael. Hazael as king of Aram and also to anoint Jehu, uh, the son of Nimish, the king of Israel. So he had commanded him to do this. And um, at that point in the life of Elijah was not a very peaceful time because he was free for his dear life. From who? Can you think of it? Whom he was uh, trying to escape from? The king of his country, Ahab, and his wife Jezebel. Why did he have to flee? <laughs> you remember that context he had with false prophets at Mount Carmel, you know, where he eliminated 450 Baal prophets and just verse war. He said, If I do not do the same way to you this time tomorrow, let me be there. So Elijah was free. But look at the situation is that he was the only one who remained faithful to God. The majority had chosen their own way. So he was running. He was praying. He was praying for his life. And then he became tired. He said, Lord, I'm no better than my ancestors. Take my life. I don't have to keep living. This is too much. Now, the Lord called him. He said, Elijah, you go stand before me on the mountain. The expression, the, the Hebrew word, go stand before me, is be my prophet, be my servant, do what I tell you. I'm calling you. And he went to the mountain. What was the mountain he went to? Mount Horeb is the same mountain that Moses received the Ten Commandments. Mount Horeb, also known as Sinai. So Elijah went to the mountain, just like Moses went to the mountain. And in the mountain, God encountered them. God spoke to each of them. And God told him the passage that we read today. God came in a gentle breeze, not in earthquake. <laughs> and he said, well, potentially to these two uh, great people, Moses and Elijah, were the same people who appeared to the Lord on the Mount of Transfiguration and they were talking with him about his exodus. But we will come to that. So let's uh, finish what the Lord told him to do and how he did it. So anyway, the Lord, the Lord told him to anoint um, Elijah to succeed him, you know, and in addition to the other command. So he set about doing it. He went to do it. And then when he came, the man, the young man who was busy in the farm, they were, you know, plowing. And he threw cloak on him, which is a symbolic way of saying, come and walk with me and be my disciple. So the guy said, let me bid goodbye to my parents. In other words, he was not ready. So he let him say, no problem. Keep on doing what you do. And he had conversion. It was instant conversion. So what did he do? He killed the oxen they were using. And he used the wood to make firewood and prepared it for a meal. They had farewell reception. So it's like he burned his bridges. It's like he's saying, my, uh, my previous profession is dead. 
I am now in awe for the Lord. So you know how sometimes you, you meet a situation that you know you have to go forward. That's it. And then in the in the second reading, the same thing is what the Lord is telling us. He's saying, You are set free for freedom. You are set free for freedom. And do not submit to the yoke of slavery, slavery of sin. God set you free for his purpose. And, and what is that? What, what did he set you free to do? We shall come to that. And that's the summary of our mission as people sent by God. And then, in the gospel, we see that the Lord set his face. You know, that's a biblical way of saying he was determined there is no going back. He was going to Jerusalem. What was he going to do to accomplish the reason why he came into the world? And what was the reason why he came into the world? To die for our sins. So he was ready, he was going to, to suffer crucifixion and death in Jerusalem. And he was not deterred. And that was what he was talking about with Moses and Elijah on the mountain previously in that chapter. So anyway, and, and as he was on that way, people, the town through which he's going to pass, the Samaritan, they didn't want him to pass. They were hostile. They were hospitable. And, and the apostles, two of them that were really men of fiery temperament, two brothers that are known as sons of thunder, James and John, they said, Lord, just give us permission to call down fire from heaven and just consume these people. And what did he do? Did he say, all right, you guys, you go ahead, do it. Get them out of the way, smoke them. No, he did not. He rebuked them. He did, he rebuked them. Because, you know, evangelization, doing God's work is not doing your own will. It is doing the will of the one who sent you. It is not about your tribal interest or your cultural interest. It is about his. What does the Lord say? What is his will in my life? Not so much what I desire. I might desire to buy a helicopter or a new tower like I had before. But is that what God wants me? Wants of me? So that's it. And then the other part in that passage is he was encountered by someone who said, I will follow you wherever you go. And he said, Foxes are dead, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Because he looked into the heart of that person and he knew what the person was desiring was not doing God's work, but the person was seeking comfort. He was telling me it's not about comfort. And then the other person whom he said, follow me, and he, and he said, let me go and bury my, my father. Wouldn't you think that it's reasonable for him to do that? And what the Lord said, oh, all right, go ahead and do it. I give you three weeks and then you come back. No. He said, the dead, bury the dead. But your part, follow me. What is that saying? It's saying to us that the matters in doing the will of God, you don't do ifs and buts. You go right on. You do it. Because God's will is free. It overrides, it trumps up everything else. So you might have your petty interests and your syncrasies, but if you look at what is the will of God, what does Christ reveal to his church? What is the teaching? What is the right thing? You do it. That's what it means to follow him, to be the disciple. So where did he lead him? What he did? 
that because he himself was a model showing us how to answer the call. What did he lead him to? He led him to the cross. Isn't that something? He did it. So, what is our hope? If we follow the Lord, we suffer. <clears throat> One man in Africa sang a song that was just terrible. He said, if you do good, you die. And if you do evil, you will live in the world and enjoy life. <laughs> I thought it was just horrible, it's bad. But it appears that way sometimes. But what is the ultimate thing? Is it to live for a brief moment and then eventually die? To have the pleasure of sin, for a fleeting pleasure of sin, and not do the will of God? What the Lord set us free to do is what we find in the second reading today, <clears throat> St. Paul's letter to Galatians. For freedom, the Lord set you free. And he said, but do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but rather serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Amen. <coughs> they will rise and protect our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God of God. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died. 
die may be purified of sin and share the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community, in hospitals, nursing homes, or recovering at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And what for what else shall we pray? That the Lord will bless our time in Massachusetts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence in our city, for an end to violence in our world, it is let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who have passed on, especially friends and family. Remember Aaron Taylor and Joe White, and Joseph Walton. For them, and for all the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the healing for our brothers and sisters who are sick, especially for John Costello. Father, by our baptism, we are committed to following your son. Hear our prayers. Help us keep our hearts focused on you. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
acceptable to our God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Amen. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For Forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me.
We of you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring forth to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as Father, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O oh Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sit for a moment. Announcements. Congratulations to Daryl Wade Robinson, who finished Rockville High School in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, May 14th, with an academic scholarship to Western Kentucky State. Daryl is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Daryl Robinson and the grandson of Mr. and Mrs. Callow and Lily Robinson. I'll be a special director to a group of pilgrims 
When I graduated uh, from Angelica University in Rome, when I finished my doctorate there, there was a tour company uh, that is dedicated to the Blessed Mother, and they want someone who have knowledge of Italian and who knew the places in Italy, you know, to lead pilgrimages to all shrines of Italy. So they happened to call on me, so I, and I did, and you know, we got to know each other. And they called me again in 2018. Remember when we went to Holy Land? I think some of you went to that. Lorraine, like, you were there, and that, yes. Okay. And uh, there is someone else that was in the that is in Venus. Was here. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, but uh, they had asked me before COVID in 2020, and I accepted, but you know, COVID came, so we couldn't go. So, we'll be going this year, and we'll go again next year. The why I'm saying is that, you know, if you can go this year, you prepare for next year. But more importantly, I want you to know that they pay for my flight ticket and for my lodging. I wanted to say that so that you know that I'm not using St. Augustine's money to fund the trip. Yeah, I just want to make that clear so that, you know, people will not be getting mad or something. Well, he's using our money to go to all the street. I don't. And when I go to Motherland, I use mine. No. So, having said that, uh, the other thing I want to ask, still on a personal level, there are some of our church members that, are, that lost loved one. Charles Todd lost his brother just um, uh, two days ago. So, may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, who rest in peace. Amen. Amen. So keep the family in prayer, and more importantly, the one who passed on. And now I'd like to invite you that we say, one our Father, one heaven, one glory be to the Father. For some of our uh, um, sisters and brothers who are in the hospital, Doris Elmore, uh, Petaline Young, and uh, Frida Martin, and you probably know other people who are in the hospital, but these three, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, the security man is supposed to speak to us, so he did, he, since he's not available today, will be next Sunday. And next Sunday, I will be here, of course, before I travel. But once I travel, you will have a priest called Father Humphrey. Father Humphrey um, is doing his PhD in Rome, Victoria University. Um, Father Luce couldn't come because he has full time work now as a hospital chaplain. So he didn't follow through the application, so it's not.
God our God, we are blessed. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ending. Thanks be to God. Seven Thank God for the Archangel, the Feather of the Shadow, the Architecture against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God forgive him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who crowd the whole world, singing the glory of your souls. Amen. Please join us in singing our closing hymn number 613. I am desired to follow <laughs> Thank you.